Are you in this video? Here, let's. I got this. Whoa. This not very massive compared to how massive my all my seed box is. Um, what those are and what I'm going to be talking about is all. So I'm currently working on doing a massive unboxing of my Johnny Seed order, um, but it's so big that I can't go over it all in a single video. So in this video, what I'm gonna be going over is I'm gonna be going over the foliages and the greenery and things like that that I bought in, you know, the flowers. In my last week live video, I went over all the veggies that I bought, um, but the majority of what I bought in this, in this <laughs> massive Johnny Seed order is flowers. Right, because our plan is we're we're going to grow some veggies, but I also I have most of the veggies on hand that we that we are going to grow. So I didn't really need to do too much of a veggie shop. But because we're going to be growing, you know, like almost half an acre of flowers this year, and we're going to be um, focusing more on you know being a flower farm, um, I needed a lot more flowers. You know, we've kind of just been growing you know ten things like zinnias and sunflowers and you know a filler and um so i've been very focused on only doing a few things now i'm opening it up i'm doing a lot more things um but before we get into those things i figured the the foliage the greenery oh thanks so much black dog keep up the good work excited to see your plants oh thanks you're you're always so generous that i'm shocked every time <laughs> even though even though um you know it's, thank you. That's very kind. Um, no, I'm distracted. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so when, it's very easy when you plan a flower farm to forget about the fact that you need the bits and pieces to make a bouquet. It's very easy to get too focused on what your favorite flower is, you know, the biggest, the most beautiful. It's easy to go out and, you know, do like what I did for the video that got released today, all about sunflowers, obsess about sunflowers, grow a million sunflowers, only have sunflowers. Um, but then you go to put your bouquets together and you realize that you need a little bit more than sunflowers if you're going to make a full, well-rounded bouquet. Um, and so the thing that a lot of people forget to buy is the foliage, the, the greenery, the, 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 the bulk that, you know, use it to like bulk up the, the bouquets. Um, and so the... So I figured this was a good one. This is a good one to start with because this is the one that isn't so exciting for people, but you really need to be thinking about it. Um, and you need to be thinking about it early on, you know, like, so sunflowers, sunflowers, zinnias, the like two big main flowers that we grow. I, you know, I don't currently have all my zinnias on hand for what I'm going to grow. And, and I'm not worried about it. I, I've ordered them. They're, they're coming. I'd be worried if I didn't know where I was going to get my zinnias from. But um, I, I don't start zinnias until April. And that's like seedlings. I don't, I don't plant out it, you know, same with sunflowers. April is when I'm going to be starting them. They don't get planted out into the garden until May. You know, the, that's a long time. But some of these foliages that I'm going to be growing, I, I need to get on it. I need to, I need to get growing them fairly soon. They're, they're fairly early in the rotation. Um, and it's also, it's really easy to, you know, grow one and, think that one is enough, but you actually need something for every single season. So in the past, the main, the main greenery that I've been using, here, let's see, I bought some more of it. The main greenery that I've been using is basils. Um, and basil, basil, I, I'm assuming it's probably basil because I always say basil and I usually say things wrong. Um, <clears throat> so I have been growing um, a lemon basil um, and the, the preferred one is here. Let's see. I marked some pages. So I got my, I got my Johnny seed catalogs here and, and I have some pages marked to be able to <laughs> quickly flip. Um, here, Miss Burns lemon. So this is, this is the lemon, lemon basil that I've been growing. Um, and, and it's fun. It's green. It smells like lemon. I, I really like it for the scent. Um, and so I need a bookmark. Um, 
Yeah, so so that is the lemon one that I've been growing, but I bought it, I bought a massive pack. You know, this this is kind of this is the stand the small retail size packs that Johnny uses. Um, and they can, you know, the, you can have a whole variety of sizes. This has a quarter of an ounce. So this isn't the smallest size pack that you can get, um, but it's packed into the same pack. I bought so much of the, the Miss, Miss Burns lemon that it came in like one of these packs, like the next size up. Um, so I still have a lot of it left over. And the thing that I realized with the Miss Burns lemon is that I don't, think I like it as much as I like some of the other basils. Um, so I, so this basil that I bought this year, this is Arameto, here cover my face to show it, Arameto. And this is a cinnamon basil, um, you know, and now that I'm looking at the page, I don't think they have a picture of it. I don't think it's one of the ones that they show, but it's, it's the, they have the cinnamon basil in here. So cover. I'm trying to mark too many pages. This one here, this is, this is the cinnamon basil and it's, it's, it's similar, the Arameto. So it is, it's a dark basil. It is, um, it has like purpley colors, um, and the flowers, when it blooms, it blooms purple. Cause so the issue with growing basil as, as a greenery for the, uh, just like all disappeared out of my head. Um, the issue about growing basil is that it can be hard to hydrate sometimes. And what that word means is when you go out into the field and you cut your flowers, you like pick them all, you know, like you kill them, you cut them off, um, and then you put them into water. Lots, lots of plants, they don't like that and they wilt and they die. Um, so what you want is for them to, you know, so some of them will wilt, they'll be sad, you know, and then they rehydrate and they stand back up. Um, other ones you pick and it's fine and you go. Um, but basil, basil is, can be really sensitive to, um, not, not bouncing back from being cut. And, and that makes a problem for, uh, the, the market bouquets too, right? Cause they have to go out, they have to hang out at the hot, hot farmer's market, go down 40 40 degrees, 100 degrees down at the market, hang out all day, go home with people. Um, and I want it to still look really good when it gets home. So the trick that I found for basil is that you pick it after it's bloomed, right? Like you kind of pick it as a greenery when it, you pick it as a greenery when you would not want it as for a culinary herb. Um, so you want the leaves, you want the tender shoots, you don't want it to go to flower if you are growing this to eat. If you're growing it to be a cut flower, you want it to flower, um, you want the stem to get quite thick, and that is when you pick it and cut it, and that is when it's gonna last really well in the bouquets. Um, so I found that's what you need to do to get it to last. And so the aromato, the cinnamon basils, all those, I love the look of them when they bloomed out, the, the flower stems are quite purple, they have a really nice texture. But I found with the, the lemon basils that they, they, they start to look a little ratty. They get kind of like browny. The, you know, the, the aromato purple flowers, the Miss Burns lemon, kind of like brandy green flowers. And so they don't look, they don't look as nice. So I love the scent, but it, the look I'm not as into. Um, but the one that I have been doing, you know, and I, I'm not going to remember the name of this off the top of my head. So I started using it as a greenery. Um, yeah, it's totally not, it's not on this page, which is where I need it to be. Um, yeah. So the one that I started using is the one that I was growing as, as a herb, the one that I was growing to eat. And it's, uh, the, so there's two, Johnny's has a, a series of downy mildew resistant basils. Um, there's two of them. There's like Red, Redgers and Prospero. I think, I think that it's, it's been a while since I've looked at them. Um, but I think that those are them. And one is shorter and, and like the leaf is fatter. And I think that's Redgers. And I think Prospero or Prospera is the, is the taller one. And so I started growing that to use as a filler and, and it, I love, it doesn't have that lemon scent that I love about the basil, but it looks a lot nicer 
as as the greenery and then because it's downy mildew resistant basils um you know we're really lucky where we are it's really dry um but even even so the you want to to get good length on the basil you want to grow it really tight together when you grow them really tight together then they start to be caused to have the they start to be affected by downy mildew because they need to breathe and too much humidity so by growing the downy mildew resistant basil varieties I have found that I get like nice, really long, good stems. And then the flowers, because you have to pick it after it's flowered, don't go brown in the way that, in the way that um, the Mrs. Burke did. Um, so that's a lot of backstory to only tell you about basil. But so, so the reason why I started with that and then just talked about it for 10 minutes uh, is it's a really easy it's a really easy greenery it's a really easy filler um, and it pairs it's a summer one right you plant this you know when it's a heat lover like the zinnias it's a heat lover like the sunflowers and so you plant this when the weather warms up you know and it it's kind of ready to start getting picked at the same time that the you know zinnias and the sunflowers are and that has been the main filler the main greenery that we've used because I have been mainly focused on going after those summer sales. Um, someone's asking how much I'm going to plant. And I'll, I, I've done, last year I had two beds of it. And I'll probably have two beds again. Um, <clears throat> I've been able to justify having two beds because I, by growing the one that I used to sell, um, I can actually make money selling basil <clears throat> early early in the year. So I, I grow it, I pick it and sell it for culinary uses early. By the time summer comes around, no one wants to pay very much money for basil. And then at that point I let it bloom out and then, then I pick it as filler. So I've been able to justify the two beds, but I think I'm going to do two beds again. But what I'm going to do this year with it is <clears throat> I'm not going to just plant it once. I'm not going to like, you know, plant them out in May and then have it just be done. Um, because I really like, especially the Aromato because it's dark. It's like a darker, like purpley color filler. This I really want in the fall. So if I only plant it in May, you know, I have a bunch of them <clears throat> there for me during um, early summer, you know, they're there in like July, August. But what I really want is to have them still around in September, you know, even into October. And so because of that, I'm gonna succession plant this. I'm probably gonna plant it three times, um, you know, and then plant it every month, basically. So, you know, maybe do like, I'll start some in April, I'll start some in May, and I'll start some in June, you know, and then they take, they take a few weeks before they get planted out. And the other way that, you know, because I've already, might as well spend a whole 15 minutes on basil, because this, if you're only going to grow one and <clears throat> you want something to pair really well with your home garden, like I, I would only grow basil or, or not even, I'd just go forage for some greenery, um, you know, in the weeds. But, um, <clears throat> what was I, oh, so the way that I grow plugs for this is instead of just having one plant, I actually put a pinch of seeds. I grow it so that there's a few plants in every single plug so that I don't then have to go through and pinch it. Um, instead, it just grows like a handful of spindly stems, um, which makes it easy for easier for me for harvesting and, and, and that. So, right. And it's easier to like seed it, right? Because basically when I do basil seed trays, I just like get a handful of seeds and I just throw seeds over it. I do it really fast. Um, okay. So that's everything you've ever didn't want to know about basil done okay but we still have a mountain of stuff okay so the reason why i started with basil is because i wanted that's a perfect example of i used to only grow basil as filler but now i'm going to be a flower farm i need to have more than that i need to have this entire mountain i, have, I need like a million million filler options a million greenery options and um, a main reason for that is that I need something in all of those seasons. Um, I need I need something, you know, like I was saying, I'm gonna succession plant the basil because I need some stuff in the fall. It's good in the summer, but I need stuff earlier, you know, and I need, I need kind of a few different textures because if I'm growing, you know, it was one thing to have 25 bouquets that 
all had the same filler. Um, but if I want to make, if I want my bouquets to look more varied, then I need to have more, more things to work with, more things to play with. Um, the more options I have, the more choices I have for what my bouquets are going to look like. Um, yeah, so last year, a uh, filler or greenery that I really, yeah, KX1, I'll get to that. Um, so the, one of the filler, I keep, I call it filler all the time. But filler can be like a flower too, so I'm, I'm trying to say greenery. And foliage is like one of those words that bleh, like it doesn't come out of my mouth, so. Um, okay, greenery. The one that I, probably the thing I was the most excited about in the greeneries that I experimented with last year was anise hyssop, um, which, you know, I think this, so just for context guys, this is, let's see, how, much, how many seeds are in here? Um, there's probably like 10,000 basil seeds in this packet. Um, and so, oh, I can do the math. Uh, so I'm so excited about anise hyssop that when I was looking at seeds, I was like, well, I better buy a lifetime supply because like, what if I only, what if I decide to grow an acre of anise hyssop? Um, so I bought this pack. It's a quarter of a pound. It says here that uh, seeds per pound, it'd be 1.1, one and a third million for a pound. So that means that there is, uh, there's there's a third of a million. So there's about 350,000 anise hyssop seeds in this package. Um, you know, so, so I think this, the size of packet that I impulsively bought in anise hyssop, I think really, really sums up how excited I am about anise hyssop after growing it for a, for the first time last year. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm getting a picture here for you guys. Okay, so this, cover my face, vented. Okay, so, let's see, sorry guys. This is the anise hyssa. Um, and so it was great because the, it, it's just a really classic green, um, but then it gets these purple flowers. And so the flowers are actually really pretty and really showy. Um, the, the purple flowers, like it was a really nice color and the shape of the flower, um, and everything of it, it, it was just, it was really nice to work with. Um, but it bloomed for me in like end of summer and the, but the greenery I could use like way earlier than that. So the anise hyssop, anise hyssop can be, it can be a perennial. I'm looking and seeing, I'm, I'm looking for, yeah, ten, well, tender perennial. A tender perennial means that it dies off. But anise hyssop for most people is perennial in zone five, because I'm a zone five here. It like, and so it's it's gonna come back for most people, but there's something there's something about clone. I've tried anise hyssop before in, in my home garden. I've grown it multiple times in my herb garden um, and it, it never survives the winter. And so I don't know that it's not that it's, cold hardy is the issue or just that maybe it's not drought tolerant or I, I don't know what it is that makes it so anise hyssop dies here in Kelowna even though we're not we're not that cold um but I can't get this to over winter so I I do need to plant this every single year so I have I planted half a bed of this last year um and I don't I don't ex I don't expect <clears throat> any of it to come back so for this year, I'm going to plant a full bed of it again, just because I really liked it. Um, and it, I'll be able to pick off of it early on, um, but it'll also be there for when it has the purple flowers, which, which I loved. Um, and this was really tall. Um, one, of the, <clears throat> one of the things, okay, sorry guys, I need to get some water. Choke. I see it in the comment, I got Sweet Annie and I'll talk about that because that was another one that I, I'm really excited about. Um, okay, so anise hyssop, um, sometimes with the greenery, it can be hard to get long stems, right? Especially if you want to use the greeneries as a cut and come again. Um, that means you, you know, you only pick so much so that it can grow, grow more. 
the niece hiss up by the time it was flowering you know it was it was like as tall as me it got really tall um and i was growing it in part shade so part part of how tall it was might have been that it was like stretching a little bit because i was hoping for more sun um but but yeah so i'm really excited about this 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 was probably one of my favorite fillers that i had um and it was very easy very easy to grow um, I did it as a transplant, but I feel like I probably could do this direct seed. It's, it's very simple. Okay, so that's the one I'm the most excited about. <clears throat> okay, let's let's talk about the Sweet Annie because I think it makes sense to talk about the things that that I experimented with last year. Um, okay, okay, I have a logical order for the next couple things. Okay, so Sweet Annie. This I grew last year because this was highly recommended as as um as a filler for dried flowers. They said it dries really well. Um, you know, if you want if you want green dried flower filler, this is Sweet Annie. This is the one that you go for. Um, and so I've never I've never grown it before. I'd never seen it before. Um, and I like I was really the thing I was the most surprised about by it. Um, which I shouldn't be because <laughs> because of its name, Sweet Annie. But it has like this really interesting scent to it, um, which you know it's absolutely described as sweet. Um, you know, it almost like very, but like a herbal sweetness, um, almost like the the flavor profile that you get in a chamomile tea is kind of like the the herbal sweetness that sweet annie had when when you like handled it you know i really enjoyed it was it was in it was in a really tight space and so i'd brush by it all the time when i'd walk by and I, and i loved brushing by it and then then i would i would smell like the sweet annie um so because i was growing it to you know experiment with it as as a dried flower um i i never use i never really used it as as a as a greenery um, in my fresh bouquets and mostly I kind of was leaving it to try to get it as big and bushy as possible so that I could go and and you know take a big harvest and hang it up to dry um, but it ended up getting like it was like taller than me it was like whoa and like and it was in like I said it was in this really tight spot so I <clears throat> I packed it because it was it was just too much and there was a couple weeks that I was able to use it as a greenery in the bouquet um, and and I really liked it um, it, it, it like the shape of it fresh it kind of made these like cones of green um, so it, it looked it looked really good it looked really sophisticated but the it was like small the petals and everything are, are very small to it um, so it's it's the type of thing you could break down into into like I'm doing a boutonniere or I'm, I'm doing like a flower crown you break it down into these tiny pieces and it'll look beautiful you leave it as this like bigger chunk it's full um, very textured very fun um, or you, like it, it could be informal it could be formal I like I feel like this is something that's really versatile and then it it grow like it just grows like crazy it's like a hedge um, it ended up dying on me I think I have I have disease issues in my main flower farm section. There's like a thousand square foot section, which I call like the flower farm. Um, and it, it was having some disease issues this year. And so the sweet Annie, I never got to see it bloom. And it kind of, it started dying off. It just like was turning black. Um, so I, I hacked it and, and threw it, threw it in, threw it up to dry. Um, but I feel like if I grew this a little bit, a little bit, um, in a healthier spot gave it you know some more ideal conditions you know maybe a little bit more space too because i had this planted at nine inch spacing i feel like it's like a hedge basically it's like trying to grow like a cedar <laughs> on nine inch spacing i feel like if i gave this like 12 inch spacing you know i could get some really nice big productive filler plants out of it that i would happily use at any time of the year um and then another thing that we are wanting to do next year um, which I know I've talked about in these live videos, but we want to do bouquets that are dry flower bouquets that we would sell fresh. Basically, things that we put together fresh, you take it home, you put it in a vase, like without water, and, and it just dries for you. Or I put them together, I hang them up dried, wrapped, and they're done. They're finished. 
Um, so I, I'm excited to have Sweet Annie because, you know, I can put those bunches, straw flowers and status and Sweet Annie together. Um, and then they're, they're completed, ready to go dry bouquet. Um, yeah, so that was my experience with the Sweet Annie and, you know, and, and I'm excited to have it, have it again. Like I was really happy with it. Okay. Uh, a, a greenery I grew and I didn't like it. I was mad at it. And then Thanksgiving came and I had it and I was like, oh my God, it's incredible. I'll never be without it ever again. Um, but I also, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Dusty Miller. Okay. So I bought a pack of this, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to see what I have going on. If Dusty Miller gets like kicked out of my flower farm, kicked out off the farm um you know I won't cry about it but if I can make space for it I would like to try this again um because the Dusty Miller ended up being really frost tolerant um so it was there for me in the fall when I needed it the reason why it's like not on it's a, it's not on the like must grow list is it was like it was so short um you know this this pack it's saying so the this is silver dust I think that the variety, so the variety that I grew last year, I bought as plants. And if I remember correctly, they were new look was the variety name. Um, but yeah, it's saying here on this packet that it's, it's eight to 18 inches and that it's going to take 88 days for cut foliage, which like that's, that's fairly long. Um, and, and especially because you kind of need to like start it ahead of time. Um, yeah. So it was short, which is, is the reason why I didn't, I, I didn't use it until like I had nothing else. Um, but yeah, but when I did finally use it, it, you know, it was about this tall, right? I don't know. What is that? Let's say like 14 inches. It was like, I probably got a 14 inch stem on it. Um, but I didn't pinch them too. Like a lot of the plants grew and to get that length of a stem that was like you know a whole plant and it like gave me a single stem that size um i do the spot that i grew it was in in a shade spot right because the dusty miller can handle can handle the the shade um you know so you know like i don't have very much shade um, there's probably more valuable things that I could put in my like only shade spot than Dusty Miller, but I also don't own a lot of things that need shade. So the fact that I, um, I had the Dusty Miller there made it kind of like, yeah, but I, so I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence about Dusty Miller. If I don't grow it again, um, I won't be sad unless I look back at my Thanksgiving bouquets that had Dusty Miller and love it. I would say though, if I was, if I was doing like bridal bouquets, I would definitely, I want, would want something in that kind of like silver shade. Um, and I know that there's other, there's other things that you can get like the look that Dusty Miller has, um, other Artemises. Um, but you know, I think you're then looking into like more perennial stuff, you know, and then I don't know, I it just, it's we get hot, dry summers. I'm, I'm looking for, I'm looking for things that can handle drought and, and, you know, 110 degrees. Um, and that's not, that's not really Dusty Miller. So that's where I'm at on it. Okay. And then the last thing that I grew last year, I still have like a mountain of stuff. Um, but yeah, the last greenery that I grew last year that I've been obsessing about the entire year is a uh, KX1 kale. Um, so I grew it as I grew it. I bought KX1 kale here. Let's see. We need a picture because the stuff, the KX1 is, is so cool. And I know when I talk about it, um, other people aren't excited, but then when I show it to them, they're like, okay, I get it. When you show it to me, then I get it. Um, so let's, okay, so this is, I'm gonna, tr I have to like hide my face. Okay, so this here, this is the KX1 kale. And it's hard to see because this picture is so small, but it's like super, super dark. And then it's got like lime green stem up the center. And it's really frilly. Um, so the reason why I bought and grew KX1 kale last year is for baby kale. Um, I was growing, you know, I was growing like a, like a red Russian, 
and I had the KX1 and then I also had like a green baby frilly kale um, and so it it was planted super densely because I was planting it for baby greens and I planted it super early because it's kale so kale you know kale can handle really cold weather and then what happened is I planted way too much because it's hard to sell kale. Um, and the, the story of last year is veggies were just impossible to sell. It was hard to sell any veggies. Um, so I had, I had like a half bed of this KX1 kale and it just kept growing because I was too busy to like rip it out. And then it got like leggy. I could no longer kind of pick it as, as a baby green. And then my ranunculuses started blooming like crazy and I had nothing on the farm to pair the ranunculus up with until I realized this KX1 kale. Because the whole time I'd been like, oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. It's so beautiful. Um, and it was tasty too. It's really good for eating. Um, yeah, so it, I loved it. it. It was great. And so I, and I've used kales before as greenery and they have pretty good phase life. Um, they are, they're like a dirty flower. They can make the water dirty. So you do want to be a little bit careful about, um, what you pair it with. If you pair it with something that doesn't have a very good base life, it can negatively affect the base life. Um, but you know, if you're sticking it in with like a bunch of zinnias that are going to last two weeks anyways, it's not really going to do much. Um, but yeah, so I had all these ranunculus that were blooming. I had nothing to put it with. And then I realized, you know, the, the height of the KX1 kale and the height of the ranunculus stems are actually really similar. Um, so I was able to throw these together and they made really dramatic, really cool bouquets. Um, and, and yeah, so I, I was really excited about it. I, I would say, so the KX1 kale, it was leggy because I had it planted super, super tight together. Um, you could maybe try to grow it out to get, like get big full size greens, but I don't know how long of a stem length you were to what I was picking for these, for these kales to be greenery is I was like cutting at the ground, you know, or like, or I'd rip them cause it was hard to like get in there cause it was so dense. I'd rip them out of the ground. They'd have their little skinny roots and I'd snip the roots off. So I like, I was using every, every single like tiny bit. I could possibly get off of these to get as much stem length as possible. And even so they still, you know, they only paired like to make these smaller bouquets. Um, but I really liked it. And then the other thing that I do with kale, um, is, and if you look back at our Thanksgiving bouquets or our Thanksgiving video, we have a bunch of bouquets that I did this with, but I let my kale grow it all summer. Um, you know, and I pick off of it, I call them Canadian palm trees because they'll be like a poof on a big long stem. They get about as tall as me by the time, by the time fall comes around. Um, and I don't, I have no interest in overwintering them, but so I save them until the fall because they kind of, they get like tired and the flavor gets less good. Um, by the time the fall comes, by the time the fall comes, I'm picking different ones, but I leave them in the ground because after the frost, I have them there as greenery. And what I do is I like just cut anywhere on the stem. I'm like, oh, you want a three foot long stem of greenery to pair with three feet long sunflowers? Like done. And then it's like this big frilly purple or big frilly green. Um, very dramatic, very fun. So I, I like to do that with kale. For me, it makes sense to do that only because prior to doing it, I get a lot of value out of the kale as, as, um, as a food crop. I don't know. I don't think it would make sense to grow a bed of kale for an entire season, just to be able to like cut and get these like single really dramatic stems. Um, that it, it would just be a lot of labor for the value of the, of the, um, the stem. But one that I do think you could grow a little bit quicker to get like a really nice dramatic um, kale stem, um, get a little bit more height um, than, you know, what I was getting with the baby greens, um, you know, and have it be just like a little bit more formal, a little bit more contained than the fluffy ones is uh, a Tuscan style or a dinosaur style kale. Um, so what I bought is um, Black Magic, and I've grown this one before. I find that, so this is, like I said, a dinosaur kale or a Tuscan kale. This is a specific variety, Black Magic. 
Um, black magic, I find, is more heat resistant. Um, one of the issues that I have with kale here, kale doesn't like the heat, they get, infect they get infested with aphids, then they get gross, you can't eat them, you can't sell them, but also beyond that, because they're covered in aphids, I can't use them as a filler in a bouquet either. Um, so black magic is a little bit more, um, a little bit more tolerant to the heat, so it's less, because it's more tolerant to the heat, it doesn't get as stressed, and the stressed plants are the ones that get the aphids on it. So I find it does a little bit better. So. So those are the two kales that I'm going to be growing um, for use in arrangements. I'm going to be growing the KX1, but I still have, like I bought a pound of it last year, so I still have tons. And then I'm going to grow some of these Black Magic kale. Um, and these, like I don't know at what time of year I'm going to want these. You know, I, I might even start these in the summer and plant them out like in the heat and let them grow and have them there for the fall. Um, because, because like, you know, going back to the Dusty Miller, you know, one of the value of these things is the fact that they are cold tolerant, right? So kale seed, I can throw kale seed in the ground in like March. Um, you know, our last frost here is, is May 1st. Um, the reason why I was able to have the KX1 as greenery along with the ranunculus is that I planted it March 1st and it was, you know, it loved growing in the freezing cold. Like we had like, I think the KX1 went down to like, it was planted and was like getting down into like the minus fives and stuff and it, as babies and it didn't care. Um, and most, most kales are like that too. Um, so they're, they're really good on the shoulder seasons um, because going back to what I was saying, when I was obsessing with basil at the beginning of the video, you know, you need, it's not just about figuring out something for the summer, it's figuring out something for, you know, the spring and the fall, because um, you need greenery anytime you have flowers. So, you know, in the same way, you have to figure out what are the flowers that I'm going to grow at this time of year, you need to figure out what's the greenery I'm going to grow to have with those flowers. Okay, so this then leads into my issue. Right, so I figured out I can have this KX1 kale um, that'll pair nicely with the with the ranunculus early on, but I don't really I get this gap where I don't really have any greeneries until things start to warm up, get to more summer stuff. Um, so I like I kind of go around the farm, you know, like I forage here and there. One of the things that I'm planning on doing for next year, I already have the seed for this, um, so it's it's not in the unboxing here, but I'm excited to try um, clover. Clover that I'm buying as a cover crop and I can plant it as a cover crop, but then to harvest it as, as like greenery in bouquets. So specifically, I'm excited to be trying um, crimson. <laughs> I'm like crimson and, crimson and clover. Um, the the crim crimson clover is the one specifically that I'm really excited to be trying um, for to be a filler in, in my bouquets. Um, I've used clovers, they have amazing vase, they have an amazing vase life, um, but the issue is the clovers that I have around my farm are shorter clovers. Um, so they're, you know, I want something with that, that height. And so the crimson clover has that height. Um, I think it's gonna end up being a way for me to have everything I love about Gonfrina in a bouquet um, without everything I don't love about Gonfrina, which is it's a pain in the butt to, to grow and harvest. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. But other other cover crops that you know I'm like I'm considering might be a really good like filler um, for early on is I was using some alfalfa last year um, and. So alfalfa, there's like a million colors in alfalfa. And I, I haven't planted this as a cover crop, it just, it pops up in my field. Um, so the, I have a yellow alfalfa, I have a white alfalfa, I have a, I have a pale purple alfalfa, and then I have a deep, deep, rich purple alfalfa. Um, and the, per, the deep purple is like, I love the color. I love the color of it. But I haven't been able to find like when I'm like alfalfa, the pictures that they always show, it looks, it, it doesn't look the, it, <laughs> I'm like, I want that purple one. So I have them around the farm. I think my plan is when I see the deep purple ones pop up next year or like in the year, I'm going to dig them up because they're perennials, right? So like that's, the, that's, that's the value of them. The fact that they're perennials, so they, they go super early. 
Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to dig them up and I'm going to get them kind of into the same space um, so that they're, you know, somewhere where if I'm like, you know, I really want some of that, I can water it, I can take care of it, and then it'll be there for me. Um, but um, in, in the same way the alfalfa, it's perennial, so it's early. There are a few other perennials that, that I think would make great, great greeneries for me. Um, so I need to get them need to get them established now so that I have them in the future. Um, and so the first one is catnip. Um, and so catnip is something that grows wild here sometimes. <laughs> um, we get like no, we get no rain here ever. So like, and it, this is like something that people like don't the, this hurts people's brains a little bit. If you don't, if you don't live in the Okanagan, you maybe don't understand this. But we are so dry that I don't have to worry about mints as weeds because mint can't grow without water. Um, you know, grass, grass also can't grow without water. <laughs> the, you know, the grass. The reason why grass is such a pest for you know, such a weed for me here is that grass can dry out and go dormant through my summer and then the second it gets water it comes back to life again. Um, the mint, you know, not so much. It can, it, the mints, they survive through the drought, um, but they don't, they don't bounce back as quickly as the grass. So they're on really wet springs, which is like never, <laughs> we don't, like we, we don't get water. We don't get water in the spring. Um, like April, May, like no rain here where we are uh, no no april showers no no maybe may flowers but but no, not because of the april showers um and then we get some water in june but if for some reason we do get some rain in like april may then there's lots of catnip everywhere and it's amazing it's an incredible filler and it blooms if if it's there it blooms for me in june and june is one of the months that is the biggest struggle for me to get flowers in um, April, May, you know, I can be doing the bulbs, um, but it then kind of becomes this like lull season before um, July, August, September when, when the summer flowers really start going. Um, so if I get a bed of catnip established onto my farm, it's there for me. You know, it's not just something that, oh, if off chance I have some good weather, I can have this. It's going to be there for me every single June. Um, and so that that's valuable for me. Uh, I think if I plant it this year, because it's such a weed, it's a mint, right? I might actually be able to pick off of it in the late summer if I plant it this year. Um, but I'll mainly be getting this established somewhere to perennialize um, so that it, it's going to be there for me for next June. You know, not 2022, 2023 is what this crop is really about. And then the other, so I've done, I have mints. And, and I grew, I bought and grew last year a mint that was called like Korean mint. Um, and, and it was really pretty, but it just, it wasn't, it wasn't beefy and it wasn't like these big stunning flowers and the stems were a little bit shorter. Um, you know, and so, so there's no mint that is as, as big and aggressive and as showy of a plant as the catnip. Um, which is because it's a mint, catnip a mint. So, so that's the reason why I'm going for the catnip. Um, and then the other one that I found does these like big, beefy, strong, good to cut the stem, good, strong stem, good, strong, you know, bouncing back for rehydrating. Um, and is, so, okay. What it is that I'm talking about, you guys need to know this, is lemon balm. Um, and so lemon balm actually is, to me, it's like almost identical, <laughs> almost identical of a plant to the catnip. Um, so, so the mints that I've grown, not all of them are as the stems. So the stems on the catnip and the stems on the lemon balm are like square. They're very, they're very structured and like stiff and thick. Um, and so because of that, they like come up, they like, they grow very vertical, they're very strong stems. Um, and I find all of the, all the mint family kind of have that stem structure, um, but not as firm and hard as, as the lemon balms and the catnip. 
Um, so, so yeah, so the lemon balm, very similar. Um, when I think about the flower, I feel like the lemon, because I'm like trying to think in my head. Um, cause I, I have a lemon balm plant that I grow just like as a herb. I really like, I like lemon balm as a tea. Um, you know, I don't have it growing as for a cut flower. Um, but if I remember correctly, the lemon balm has a white flower and the catnip is like a, like a very faint purplish flower. So they, they do look a little bit different. Um, and then the catnip, the, is kind of like a dusty, a dusty green, whereas the lemon balm is a little bit more of a green green. Um, so they're very, very similar, similar flowers, similar shape and everything, um, but just a little bit different. And then the lemon balm, you know, lemony scent, catnip, cats love it. You know, so, so I can, I can, oh, you have a cat at home that you don't want knocking over your plants, get the one with the lemon balm. Uh, like no cats, go for the catnip, or you do have cats, you know, buy the catnip one, feed them the bouquet when you're done. Um, I, I, these same grow exactly the same way, have the exact same advantage. If I grow them, they will bloom out for me in June. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited about these. Let's see. Oh, it's saying lemon ball, perennial. So zone, zone four to nine, whereas catnip, zone three. You know, the, the lemon ball, like, let's put it this way. There's no wild lemon ball anywhere in the Okanagan, but there's wild catnip. So obviously the lemon balm isn't, isn't as drought tolerant as the catnip. Um, the catnip I think is, is worth the, you know, worth its weight in gold, um, just for how drought tolerant it is, you know, to have a plant that I only water in the spring so that I can do a heavy harvest off of, you know, and then I, then I only need to sparsely water it to keep it alive. Um, for me here where nothing grows without water, that's, that's a pretty valuable plant. Okay. And then, so that's things that have grown. Now we're, now we're more into things that haven't really grown before. Okay. So the next one that I have is, is Euphorbia or Snow on the Mountain. Um, let's see. I need to get a picture. I feel like this has to be in here, but it might not be because it's, it's a weird one. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's, um, Oh yeah. Guys, look at these clovers. Like how, how would you not want those? Look at those crimson clover. How would you not want that in your, in your nerd, in your, in your bouquets? Hairy vetch. I've used that before too. Um, I like the hair, the vase life is good on the hairy vetch, but it's really brittle. So it's hard to work with. I'd rather work with like garden peas. Okay. Sorry. I'm getting distracted guys, but, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't find a picture of the euphorbia. Okay, so I see it in the comment here, so I'm gonna address that. So euphorbia, the one thing about euphorbia is if if you so the sap um, can cause can cause burns. Um, you need to be careful when when picking it um, because the sap from it um, does does the thing that you get it on your skin. Here, oh here, let's see. There's a warning. No, milky sap may cause skin irritation in sensitive individuals. Um, and quite often, like the, it, the biggest issue with these isn't like in that someone's gonna take it home and, and like cut it and get a little bit on their skin. Um, but usually it also, it causes like UV sensitivity. So it can be irritating and then you have UV sensitivity and then you're out in the sun and you, um, and you get exposed to the sun and it turns into like a blister burn. Um, I'm, I'm fine with this. There's, there's actually lots of things. <laughs> if, if you have a home garden, you probably grow something that can cause irritations like this because everything in the carrot family does this. Um, you know, like, so Queen Anne's lace, Queen Anne's lace is another one. Cause it's, it's just a carrot. It, it does the same thing too. Um, I, I'm not too worried about it because I wear gloves and I wear long sleeves and, um, you know, it, anyone who gets hired is like wear gloves, wear long sleeves. Like it's, it's just like a safety thing. Um, so, so it is, it's something to be aware of, but you know, it's kind of like people all the time always want to know if like my cats are dying because I have lilies in my garden. Um, and it's like, yeah, sure. Like lilies are poisonous to cats, but like not very many cats are going around and like eating lilies in like in the garden. Um, so just because there's some, 
you know, or there's there's so many things that are poisonous outside. Um, you know, if if you're if you're afraid of things being poisonous, um, then outside is horrifying. Um, but you know, you just you, you need you need to be respectful of plants. Um, you know, and, and you need to be safe. There's lots of things that you need to be safe. You know, like one of the main reasons I wear gloves is because staff lives in dirt. And I cut my hands all the time. You know, to me, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not gonna be afraid of dirt, even though like I can get a staph infection from it. But I should be aware of if I'm handling dirt with cut hands, you know, 16 hours a day, every day, that maybe that puts me in like a higher risk category for like, you know, not wanting to get a staph infection. So be careful. Um, yeah. Okay. So this, this is like a variegated. So we're talking about euphorbia, snow on the mountain. This is a variegated um, foliage. So it has like a really nice, a really sophisticated look. Um, this is probably more sophisticated looking foliage than pretty much everything that, that I grow. Um, I've never grown it before because, you know, I can clearly see looking on the seed packet why. Uh, days to maturity, 110 to 120 days. That's a long time. That's like four months. So this, this will be valuable. Um, this will be valuable for me, um, for, for in, in the fall, maybe some late summer. Um, but this doesn't make sense for me to grow as like a single greenery because it's going to be hard for me to get early. Um, but I've never grown it before. So I'm really excited to experiment with it. Um, okay. And then the next one, which I have a page open for to show you is I'm getting some shishito or sorry, not shishito, shisho. Okay. And so the, here, here they are. This is, this is what, what I've, what I've bought for myself. Some of these, and this is, this is a green for eating. It's in the herb category. Here, what's it say? Uh, distinct cinnamon clove flavor and aroma with a spiciness of cumin used in Asian, Asian cooking, sushi and salad mix. Um, and I like, I know that some people like to grow it for the salad mix. Um, and then Florette, Florette talks about using this as, as a, as a greenery. Um, and so the one that I got is the red. And then I also got the Britain. So the red is deep color and frilly. Um, and so that's exciting. And then the Britain is the back side is purple and the front side is green. So like really fun variegation. I have concerns about these. I have concerns that they're going to be whiny in hot weather um, because I have hot weather. I have concerns that they aren't going to hydrate really well. Um, you know, I, 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 I know that it's going to be like the basil where you need to pick this, you know, at like, you know, a pretty advanced stage of maturity. And if you pick this early on, it's, it's not, it's not going to work out. Um, but you know, they look really cool. Um, and you know, it's saying for height, it's saying 18 to 30 inches, which is tall. Um, so, so they could be versatile. I, I'm willing, I want to give them, I think they'll be easy to grow. Um, you know, Dusty Miller, not so easy to grow. These will be easy to grow. So, you know, because of that, I'm willing, I'm willing to you know, experiment with them. Okay. More stuff that I have grown before. Um, so, I, because I was like going through stuff because I basically have to break everything down because I have like, I bought like, I don't know, a couple hundred. No, I guess not that many. I have like probably 150 different seed packs. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of trying, like I was a greenery, greenery foliage. That makes sense. as like a category. Um, so I'm throwing this into the category. I would say this is a focal flower um, because I'm obsessed with it, but no one agrees with me. So uh, coral fountain amaranth. Um, you know, I'm, I'm putting amaranths in for the greenery because that is, you know, that is kind of how I use them, even though I'm like, you could just have it on its own. Um, this is the only amaranth that I purchased. Actually, I take that back. Cause I put it in, I, I put in an order when I, like last week I ordered more seeds from William Dam and I think I impulse shopped and bought more amaranth. Um, but I, I don't need, I don't need more amaranth cause I have like, you know, so how, how big of a pack is this? This is, uh, yeah. So this has like 50,000 seeds in it, maybe even more. 
because this the amaranth seeds are tiny so this could easily have more than 50,000 amaranth seeds in it um and I definitely I don't need 50,000 coral fountain amaranths um but yeah so the coral fountain is like the pink drapey flowers I'm like you know what why aren't I showing you a picture because look at that how do you not want that okay and th this works perfect because I can tell you about my other amaranths too okay so the other amaranths that I grow is I I, I can't read this, but I grow velvet curtain, and I don't know if this is saying it's velvet curtain, but it looks like velvet curtain, and then I grow hot biscuit. Oh, th this is red spike, but red spike and velvet curtain look the same. Okay, and then I grow hot biscuit, which is the brown, and it's the best, it's the best ever. I need more brown flowers in my life, um, but none of them are as good as hot biscuit. So lots, lots and lots of hot biscuit, and then I grow the green drapey one, and then I have the then I have the coral fountain, which is the pink. Um, I find the spikes are a lot more usable for me because I do bouquets, right? I do these, I do these market bouquets. I don't do, um, I don't do like floristry work, right? So I don't, I don't need these big drapey um, curtains of amaranth, like what someone would maybe want for for doing like an installation piece, like what someone would want for doing an arch or like a bouquet where you hold it in your hand and like drapes down and it looks beautiful. Um, but I do use these in the bouquets. And so what I do, because everything needs to be very vertical in the flower cone um, when they get wrapped, because they go into the bucket and then all you see is the top. From the side you know it's just fingers the flowers are only viewable from the top so the way that i use the drapey amaranths because they look nice in a vase it and i'll make sure you know i'll make sure that like if the bouquet let's see the bouquet is this tall okay, the flowers are up here and i put the amaranth in i'll make sure that i place it so that it drapes here but i won't let it drape past right because i want when someone puts it into their into their vase at the stem like that it drapes down out of their bouquet a little bit, um, but it's not like laying on their table. So I'm aware of it when I put it in. But then, so, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's like that. And then when I go to wrap it, I like turn it upside down so that it flops up, and then I wrap it into the cone, and then and then it like lays against the paper. So people can see it in the cone, um, but it's still, it's not gonna look awkward when they take it out of the cone at home. Um, but I also, I do wanna be, you know, being available to sell to florists. Um, and florists, they use those droopy amaranths all the time. Um, so, so I definitely, I want to have some of that. Um, and in the Coral Fountain, they don't sell at, at um, William Dam, which is where I bought my amaranth from last year. So that's the reason why, why I had to get it from Johnny Seeds. Like, oh, look at all these beautiful things. Okay. Next, something else that I have planted many times and it has never done anything for me, um, but I'm going for it. I'm doing it again. Um, so Bapleurum green gold, Bapleurum. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I think it is. Okay, so it is an early, an early, and it's kind of like a filler flower. Um, like, is that, which one? Here, here's a picture of it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's these little yellow flowers, um, you know, really, really fun, just bit of texture, um, texture and movement and drama in, in a bouquet, um, really beautiful spring colors, right? With being those like, like lime, limey yellow flowers, the bright color foliage. Um, so I've, tr I keep planting it. So I've tried doing it as seedlings and they just didn't do anything. Um, they didn't, like, I don't even think they made them out of the seedling tray. And then I've tried direct seeding it. The, the hard thing about direct seeding things that you've never grown before is that if you've never grown it before, then you don't know what it looks like for when it pops up um, when you direct seed. So if you don't know what it looks like, it makes it really hard to weed it. Right, because if, if you don't know what it looks like and it looks like weed and you just weed it, then then you're left with nothing. So I've planted it a few times. Um, I don't know if it germinated or not. 
I don't know if it did germinate and I weeded it out. I, like, I, I don't know what the story is as to why I've never, <laughs> never been able to grow it, um, get it successfully to see what it looks like before. Um, but I'm going to keep going with it because it, it is a really nice, really early one. Um, you know, and this that one's probably on the list of things that I need to plant this week. This week, I need to drag my hoses out. and It's, it's above freezing, so I need to connect five hoses together. I need to give myself like 300 feet of hose and then I need to attach it to my outbuilding where I have water still. And then I need to drag this hose all the way down my property until I get to my green, uh, to my greenhouse, to my high tunnel, um, which I have some things growing in that should be fine. I have some, I have some like uh, fever few and, and things like that that got planted in the fall, but it's mostly empty. And because it's covered, the soil's dry. Um, so what I need to do is I need to water the soil in there so that I can then direct seed a lot of these things that do well in the cool weather. So, you know, I'll put some of these pleurum in the ground. Um, I'm going to direct seed some larkspur, things like that. Um, so I'll, I'm not going to put the whole pack in. We'll plant a little bit. We'll see how it goes. And then if I can't see anything coming up, I'll very carefully you know, in a spot where I know that it's planted, so I don't weed it. Um, I'll try it, try it again a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so wish me luck, guys. <laughs> That's the story of a plurum. Uh, maybe I can do better. Okay, so the next one that I have here is hyacinth beans. Um, and this, this is in the category of greenery uh, foliage because I think these look great in bouquets, like to let I think what, so what I want to do with this is, because these look cool, I'd, I'd like to just see what they look like. This is totally like a fun for me um, experiment. Oh, Ian's coming in. Hello. Are you coming to? I'll say hi for a few minutes. I'm not done. I still, I still have like lots. I still have all my grasses. Um, so. It looks like you've done less than you have left. Yeah, but like the grasses, <laughs> the gra like, I, I think I need like another half now. I'm letting Ian know because he's probably going to start doing bedtime for the kids. Right uh, now, I'm just working on Leah's writing, and she's writing very much run-on kid sentences. <laughs> she's, she wrote as Leah, we just get her to write a few sentences every night, and then we correct them, and she can work on her spelling. So she wrote a story about a bear who shook a tree, but no apples came out. Ooh. So he shook the tree again, but no apples came out. <laughs> So he shook the tree again, <laughs> and a lemon came out, but he doesn't ah. like lemons, so he shook the tree again. So we were talking a little bit about... That's a pretty good story. <laughs> yeah, I like the story. <laughs> the, the word selection was a bit repetitive. Sometimes she just uses the same words over and over again on her four sentences, so that... She does that on purpose to make her sentences easier. Yeah. So Which, she... like, I can appreciate, yeah. like, the logic, the scheming logic of that. Yeah, I was I was saying that that's kind of like little kid writing a little bit. Like that's that's some something that you because she kept using the same words over and over again. I was like, you can do that for dramatic purposes, but if you just use it for the purpose of you know like not using a variety of language, then it comes across as like little kid writing. Yeah. And then she got mad at me. <laughs> Well, how is she going to write successful novels I know, right? unless we critique her uh, her her uh, storytelling structure from the beginning? I know. <laughs> two, two writing storytelling juggernauts such as ourselves must have. <laughs> I know. Look at our kids. extensive look at our extensive resumes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Can you guess what I've been talking about? Mm. Uh, seeds. That's it. You guessed it. Oh wow. Okay, guys, let's let's uh, let's do a poll in in the chat here because so I put out a video um, all about my sunflower seed or uh, sunflower selections seed unboxing. That was hard to get out. Yeah. Um, so I put that video out today. You know, and then the next few weeks we're going to be working on going through this Johnny seeds. Um, you know, unboxing, going through all the seeds that I bought. Um, but what do you guys think? Do you guys like, do you like when, do you like chatting about seeds? Yeah. Tell us, tell us in the comments. <laughs>
We, we have a because, feeling that... Because there's lots of seeds I could still talk about. <laughs> oh, hey, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Heather. Heather's my friend in real life. So she is incredibly suffering because she tunes into these live videos sometimes, but then she also still has to hear me talk about, talk about all my seeds in real life, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think people like the seed talk. See, I feel okay about talking about seeds because our seed videos do really well. So I assume that means you all like hearing me talk about seeds. You know, for me, seed talk kind of comes, it's like the, the genesis of the excitement for the, the gardening or farm season. And I think everybody kind of feels that way, where it's like the start. It's the first step, right? So your enthusiasm is at the max. You know, it's not like it's like late summer and your weeds have gotten away from you because you went on vacation and you're, you know, you can't keep up with the harvest and you've got all these plans and you have to like find time to can, you know, a million tomatoes and stuff. It's just like, I just get to look at seeds and think about what will happen. And, uh, and so I just feel like the concept of seeds has like a built in excitement around it. You done your four sentences? Okay. I'll be out in a second. Leah wants to show you her cat toy she's still making. It's not, it's not a cat toy. Oh, it's not a cat toy anymore? I tried, no, I made two cat toys, but... Okay, Leah, we're doing a survey. Um, do you think it's interesting when I talk about seeds? Uh, no. No? Yeah. But you like, pick, you like shopping for plants. Yeah. yeah. Right? You like, yeah. you like it when I let you pick things out of the, out yeah. of the catalog. Yeah, because they get to be mine. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and you like it you like going shopping at like when we go shopping in person at like the greenery and stuff, right? Um go and buy like flowers that are already growing. Like oh, plants that are oh, growing. No. No? No. <laughs> you don't like going I remember this time when we you got to let us bring what toy to this giant farm and it was so boring we just had to follow you around <laughs> and say yes to your advice. It was so boring. It took forever, and and Sam got to pick the toy for us, and it was a broke, an old, like controller. <laughs> it was so boring. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to the the plant nursery by myself this year. Is the moral of the story here? Okay, hey, show them what you made. Uh, okay. I tried to make a blanket, but I got it all tangled up. So I tried, that's how I do it is I make a knot, but then it got caught up with it. And there's lots of loops like this. So I put the loops around the ball to make it more ballish. <laughs> that makes sense. It's actually elastic -y. Yeah. So Leah, Leah's pretty good at throwing. So we play catch in the house with that. It's fun. I don't know. And then I'm gonna turn it into a teddy with the loops. Because I can loop it onto another one. Yeah. Just kind of like a snowman teddy. Mm -hmm. Cute. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Ian? Do you think it's interesting when I when I talk about seeds? Well, it's it's exciting for me. I sometimes I I lose interest because the <laughs> amount of time that you can talk about seeds is substantial. You, you are know, a guest. Well, I mean, there's only twenty four hours in a day. You yeah. are a guest. <laughs> so, but you know, it's fun to think about all the new stuff because every year we're growing so much good yeah. stuff, right? And uh, I know that um, I really finished the season off like just eating so much beets, basically just eating beets and salad and over <laughs> lettuce is, is what like I love eating. And so, you know, like getting through the seeds is one more step closer to those like delicious spring greens oh thanks so much PJ. you know that that uh i'm excited to start the new season because it's like my body just feels so good when i'm eating fresh from the farm all the time <sighs> okay and none of that don't do that <laughs> you're the toy we're in their dress up the spot that we do this is like in their toy room yeah so there's toys everywhere the, the dress up container got destroyed you know the Early early spring is always the the leanest times 
Lena's times for, for food. Time. Okay, Leah, we're gonna go. The, no. do the no. I always say that Lent Lent is because there was no food left, and that's the reason why no. why Europe was fasting because all of your all your storage crops were finished. But you know, it's it's easy it's easy to. How are you doing? Oh. Bye bye. <laughs> you guys are silly. Yeah, it's it's easy. It's easy to easy to be excited to have all those fresh greens back after after a cold hard winter and after it's been so long for for not having them. Oh yeah. Okay, they're gone. So yeah, Leah needs her own channel. She she would love to have her own channel. She loves coming in here during the live videos and like getting to to say hello to everyone. Um, yeah, but, and she likes being in the videos too, which which is cute. It's fun. Wait, let's get let's get back onto this. Um. Okay, so the one that I was talking about is uh. Hyacinth beans, you know, it's saying the variety here is Ruby Moon. Um, and so, so this is, I don't know if you guys have ever seen these before, but they're really cool. Um, they have these like really stunning um, flowers. They, they look like a bean, you know, and bean leaves are like really attractive. They have like a really nice shaped leaf. And then they have these like really cool, pretty flowers. Um, and then they make these like cool, cool, like hyacinth colored um, seed pods. And so I'm growing that partially because I want to grow it and I want to see what it looks like because I don't know that I've ever seen it in person. I've only ever seen pictures of it. Um, so I want to give it a try. I think it should be fine here. It, it likes heat. So, um, but I probably have to like be watching it and be watering it. But yeah, and then I will be able to use it as like a greenery, um, as a foliage, like a little like feature thing um, by cutting, not for the flowers, but once the pods are on. Right, so I can have these like drapey, fun stems to play with. Um, they'll be they'll be more of of like a treat. Um, it won't be won't be kind of like oh, I have a million of these stems and I'm going to be putting it um, into the into the sorry the 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 um I'm very distracted. Um, yeah. I'll need a trellis for it, someone's saying. But yeah, so the, I don't know, I forget what I was saying. Um, but yeah, so hyacinth beans, I, you know, I, I really don't have very much to say about them because that is, that's a good example of something that's just gonna be an experiment, it's just gonna be fun. Okay, so the next thing that I have, I was like trying to find pictures for this um, and for the life of me, I couldn't find it in the, in the catalog, um, so, so I don't know. I don't know what the... Oh, look! Here's the hyacinth beans. Perfect. I can show you guys a picture. So, there they are. You know, and then, like I said, this is the flowers. But I won't pick it with the flowers. I'll pick it for the pots. Yeah, so that's kind of fun. Okay, so the next thing that I have is um, Atriplex, which I'm trying to find. You would assume it would be in the A section. Um, and it wasn't in the A section, so maybe it's not even listed in the catalog. Um, and it's, it's very much filler. Um, so, you know, and now that I'm thinking of it, Orc is like another one. I think, I think that's how you say it, that I thought I bought. Um, yeah, and so Atroplex, you kind of grow this for like the, like the seedy kind of structure. Um, that you get out of it. I've never grown this before, so I, I don't really have very much to say about it. Um, but the, yeah, so I bought a red plume and then copper plume of the Astroplex. And so, and I, oh no, you know, I've, I've seen this. Um, I saw this, uh, a local friend has, has a flower farm and we went out and saw their flower farm. And you know, I should tell you guys this because I was looking at this. So we, this is, I'm, okay, I'm done with that. I've seen these, they're cool. Um, I think I can use them dried, but they're also like a seedy kind of texture thing that I can use, um, use fresh. Um, and then I still have grass, but I'm doing an aside. Um, so 
because I, I was doing, when I was editing the Sunflower Selections video, I was going through a bunch of old footage um, and I, I have videos. I have videos that I need to make. You know, it's mid-January. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea where where the, where the, you know, where the winter has gone, um, but I better get on it. Um, and so I filmed two farm tours, which I wanted to, you know, be, I want to edit and put out during this like winter time. So one of them is at a local farm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, one of them is at, at a local farm here and we went and we filmed during like the height of summer and the footage is like, so it's so pretty. Um, you know, and they, they talk about their, um, it's, it's kind of their like retirement plan starting this flower farm. Um, you know, it's something that they can like stay busy with, you know, make a little bit of money, but it's a reason to be able to like grow all these flowers. Um, but there's not like a ton of pressure on them to, you know, make, you know, they're not like me where I'm like, how am I going to make, how am I going to sell a hundred thousand dollars? That's how much I need to sell in order to, you know, be able to pay my bills. Um, you know, so, so, you know, it's fun to hear their story. So I have a farm tour and a chat with them to edit up. And then when we went on vacation to the island, um, we also did a farm tour and like a chat with a flower farmer out near Victoria. And um, very cool, very cool what she's doing. She's like growing in her yard type space, like very small, um, you know, the type of thing that anyone could imagine that they could do too. Um, and then she was, she also told me they have started like a co-op, like a flower co-op in Victoria. And so she was telling me all these details all about, um, the flower co-op, you know, and it was just, it was fun to talk to someone who is, you know, a little bit more further along in their flower farm. Um, you know, she's like established, you know, she's been doing it for a bunch of years. Um, so, you know, she can speak, speak to, you know, the success of her flower farm, um, you know, from this like wealth of, of information. Um, so I'm, I, I need to put them together. You know, I, I can, we filmed them and then it was like for the winter. Um, but I, I think that you guys are going to really enjoy, uh, getting, getting to, getting to see, see these other farms. Um, you know, especially at this time of year when, it, you know, the, all the farms around me aren't, aren't looking very farm like. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really hoping to be able to kind of get those put together um, in the next couple weeks here. Um, and we also are, um, we're, we're actively working on trying <laughs> the, like it, our timeline has just been getting pushed out because we've been having a hard time getting all of our like tax paperwork stuff done. Um, but we are going to be making how much money I made farming. Um, and I think that that the tentative plan for now is Monday, like, you know, next week, Monday, we'll get that out. And then the Monday after that, we are going to be doing the, how much money we made, um, on YouTube video. Um, so we'll do like our, our money breakdown, <laughs> um, like what we did last year. Um, okay. But back to the seeds, we need to get this done. Uh, cause Ian's going to start heckling me for, for bedtime. Um, and, and I've been going already for an hour and 15 minutes. And if we get through these quickly, then I can answer, um, do a few questions at the end here. Okay. So the last category for greenery foliage, um, is these are all my grasses. So I have these like all categorized together. Um, I love, love grasses. Uh, I love the texture that they give like in a bouquet. Um, here, I'm, sorry, I'm getting the page to hold up. Right. So this, this is the page where Johnny is, is kind of showing the pictures of, of some of the grasses there. Um, and so the last year, last year was kind of the first year that I grew grasses. And one of the ones that I loved, and I don't think it's in here because I think I still have seed left from it is, um, I did lime millet and like it, it was, I loved it. The color of it was like very, very bright. Oh, okay, guys, this, this was intimidating to me because I thought there was a lot of things here, but uh, I just have many seed packs of the same thing. Um, that makes it easier to get through this. Yeah, so the lime millet, I really liked it. I love the texture. I love how um, being a millet, you know, the seed is very distinct. Um, so, so I really liked it. I really liked it. And then it was bright, 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 bright. Um, 
Someone's, so spacing on the on the millet, I used a cedar. I just dumped like a ton of seed. It was like a line. Um, they were they were very they were very tight together. Oh, thanks so much, Jennifer. More seeds. Oh, oh you okay? So you said the mushroom kit. I okay. Sorry guys. I'm I'm just gonna like take a second. So we got we got a package in in the mail. Um, it was it was something from our Amazon wish list. Um, and. And yeah, and so it had a had a mushroom kit in it, and but there was there was no slip. Usually for the wish list things, there's there's always like a slip that comes along with it, and, and so this one didn't didn't have the slip. But I did get it, and thank you so much. Um, that that's the one. So it's it's a mushroom growing like grow your own mushrooms at home, and so that was like the thing that that was Ian's thing that he put into, into the, the wish list. He'd been wanting forever to, to try out one of these, these mushroom growing kits. And we kind of just never had gotten around to doing it. You know, we kind of like, we started talking about wanting to do it like three years ago. We're like, Oh, we'll buy one and we'll like make a video about it. Um, cause you know, they look like they're so cool. Like you just sit them on a plate and they grow mushrooms. Um, and it just, it never happened. And so he was really, he was really excited when we, when we opened it up. Um, yeah. And then I think, I think with those kits too, like after you grow the mushrooms, um, you can like throw the, throw the leftover stuff into your compost. And then there's a chance that it, it like can get in, you know, if you have like wood and stuff, wood chips in your compost, it can, can work its way into the compost and, and grow mushrooms Grow, grow mushrooms again every you know once in a while um and no matter what even if it doesn't if it you know it, it can be really beneficial for your compost um so if if you if you do them and you have a compost pile um you know i'd be i'd be interested to know how that works out for you but yeah thank you so much it's uh it, it was very generous and very kind of you to send it put it in straw okay yeah i i have a straw bale that i bought um so I bought a straw bale um, to to mulch my eucalyptus, and that snowed a bunch, and I didn't put it out. <laughs> um, if it, the snow, we have like tons of snow, um, and it's currently melting. So I might put it down, but we got we got really cold. Um, yeah, because so I have this I have this um, eucalyptus like a handful, very sad, um, and they aren't cold hardy here. Um, but maybe, maybe they are if I get enough snow. I don't know. Eucalyptus is weird. Um, so we'll see. But I did, so when I bought, when I bought these seeds, right, because I saw at the beginning people asking about eucalyptus, if I bought eucalyptus, and I didn't because you couldn't find it. Um, so I put, and it also, I had no success with eucalyptus last year. I'm willing to give it a try again. I wouldn't mind like throwing a few plants into my greenhouse, grow it in my greenhouse, and then see if it'll actually survive the winter um, in the greenhouse. Cause I know some people have said that they can. Um, so, you know, I'd, I'd be willing to, to try out a few, um, but they, they're a lot of work and you're supposed to start them really easily. There's like a global shortage of eucalyptus seeds um, because of the crazy wildfires. I think it was, what year was it, 2020? Was it when, yeah, 2020 is when all the Australian wildfires were, you know, like all of Australia burnt down. Um, and so because of that, you know, the seed production for eucalyptus got taken out, burnt down the forests. Um, and then any, like a ton of the seed production that, you know, is still available is actually going to reforesting Australia. So, you know, when, when it happened back in 2020, they basically said there was going to be shortages on eucalyptus kind of for like a few years into the future um and then seeds in general have been there there's since the pandemic there's like a huge amount of demand for seeds um and then for flower seeds too you know so many people are getting more interested in flower farming and things you know and growing their own flower gardens um that they're seeing you know like big demand so there's less eucalyptus available because of the fires um and then there's more people wanting it so it's it um eucalyptus is one of those things that's you know kind of tricky right now um ideally if it was me i i would love to be able to buy eucalyptus seedlings um you know just grab 10 at my local nursery um but yeah okay so let's finish this grass 
Okay, so I was saying that I did the lime millet and I loved it. Um, and then the two that I really like, oh, they're not in here. How are they not in here? These are like the best. Um, I wanna show you pictures of these, but you'll have to go look on Johnny's seed sites. So these, I've been wanting to grow these for like a long time. And I don't know why I haven't bought them before, um, but, but I finally bought them this year. So Highlander and Lowlander grasses. Um, and so these are, yeah, and I got, got 5,000 lowlander, which I don't know why. That's a lot of, that's a lot of grass seed. I feel like I made a mistake considering there's 5,000 pack there. Um, but yeah, so the highlander and lowlander, they're similar to the millet where they like have like this kind of very concentrated, like, you know, spray stem, you know, oh flicking my elastics editor. Um, you know, they're kind of they're kind of like this, right? Where they come up. Um, they're not like a poofy type grass. Um, so they they look very architectural, um, very structured in the bouquet. Um, but and then they have like movement to them, but they're they're not like they're not like spraying, like they're not like, you know, a big fan coming out of the the bouquet. They're they're you know a more concentrated piece. Okay. And then for the opposite of that, um, I have frosted explosion. Okay, and then these ones I can, this one I can show you. Uh, let's see, so this, this is frosted explosion. Um, hold it up a little bit more. I know the light's kind of bad there. Yeah, so it's, it's like a, like, you know, it looks like this like firework type, um, type thing. Like, oh, it opens up so much. Um, the problem, People talk about frosted explosion and they say it's really short. It's pain in the butt to work with because it's not tall enough. Um, but whatever, I'll give it a try, especially because apparently I have, you know, 5,000 lowlanders. So if it doesn't work out, it doesn't matter. I got those other ones. Um, and then I have, I gotta look at this because I like, it's hard to see the details in this picture, but I'm being reminded of how excited I am about this, guys. Okay, so then I bought um, green drops. You know, now that I look at this, all these grasses and like how many different grasses I bought, this this was like when like I stopped resisting and started impulse buying. Because there's like, I don't need a bunch of different varieties. I really need to be like, okay, I have Highlander and Lowlander and I grow it together and then I have like a more open one and I grow that. Um, but I basically bought like every grass, it kind of looks like. Anyway, so here's Green Drops. This is this is the other one that I bought and this looks so cool. Oh, I get, like, I can't wait for this. Um, Cause this looks like it's gonna be like a big, like almost like, um, like a, like a corn tassel, you know, like when, when the corns bloom and it comes out. Um, yeah, no, that, that looks really cool. But then also some grass pieces. I, th I think those will look really fun. Those will look really fun in bouquets. Um, another thing that I'm, that I'm buying, um, I had to buy it from William Dam Seeds because you can't ship it from Johnny's into Canada is I'm also buying broom corn. Um, I'm getting like black broom corn and, it, but the green drops, that kind of looks like everything that I like about the broom corn, but then green, because green's my favorite. Um, yeah, no, that, that's exciting. Okay, and then the last one, and then we'll do, uh, then we'll do a few questions, um, is I got this feather top. Um, you know, and that's fun, like all fuzzy, fuzzy and fun looking. This is like, like I said, this, this was like clearly me, clearly me <laughs> doing impulse buys. Um, you know, the, the grasses though are really versatile. Um, the grasses, they're, they're going to be something that I can sell to florists. Florists are going to want it. They're going to be something that I can use in market bouquets. They like keep, they keep really well. They have like really good phase life. And then they're also something that I can dry and use as a dry flower. Um, cause one of the things that I really wanted, um, more in my dried flowers, you know, I have like mountains of dried flowers this year. Um, but the one thing I kind of wish I had more of was more greens. Um, you know, and so, so it's, it's kind of, it's kind of missing, missing having that green. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to have lots, lots of grasses. Um, though I will have to, I'll have to contain myself. I probably need to, to only have one bed of grass, but 50 feet, a 50 foot, a 50 foot bed of grass. 
I don't know. That sounds pretty exciting. Okay, I can probably stick around for you know a little bit. Um, I can hear that Ian still has the kids going downstairs, so I don't have to run yet. Um, so if there's if there's any questions, um, we can do some some questions. Oh, okay. No, you know what? Bunny tails. Bunny tails is the one that everyone always complains about. Everyone's always complaining that the the height on it is um, is very short. Maybe the frosted explosion isn't. Maybe the frosted explosion isn't so bad. Though I think I think people complain about that one too. But you know, ideally, ideally it's nice to have. Ideally, it's nice to have. Um, <clears throat> um, you know, two to three feet for for your like bees for for your stem length, especially you know for something that you maybe want to sell to a florist. Um, someone's saying like uh, sweet Annie for dried flowers, and I have that. I bought. Um, I I grew a little bit to experiment with last year, um, and and I'm growing a lot more of it this year. I want to use it dried and fresh. Um, what about poisonous mushroom issues? Um, like my my family growing up, we um, we do like mushroom picking. Um, so you know basically the rule if you're like foraging for mushrooms is. If you don't know exactly what it is, like don't touch it, don't eat it. Um, you know, so I'm I'm not I'm not super concerned about you know poisonous mushrooms because it doesn't it doesn't matter if they're poisonous or not poisonous unless you know exactly what it is that you're that you're eating. Um, you you want to stay away from it with with mushrooms. You know, and and with kid my kids in general, we've you know because we eat so many things in the yard even as babies. Um, yeah, because like, so in my, my home garden, everything, you know, before we moved here to the farm, um, our yard, everything was edible, everything was food. Um, so the kids, you know, as babies, they were like, oh, I crawl around, there's red berries, I eat red berries. Um, so I, I had to teach them because they grew up in an environment where you could eat everything. I had to teach them that just because you can eat everything in, in our home doesn't mean that you can eat everything elsewhere um because you know we'd be walking walking around town and they'd be like oh look at this shrub with red berries on it it's like oh no that's like poisonous and it, it was interesting because as kids they were like why would you grow a poisonous berry and i'm like excellent question i don't know why you would do that why wouldn't you just grow the edible one um but but yeah so you, I, so i'm i'm not too worried about that uh frostic explosion won't ever go away well, nothing grows here without water, so it's I'm I'm not too worried about weeds. Bunny tail is kind of short but dries great. Um, snow gums or eucalyptus. Uh, any suggestions for an easy pickable grass for first time gardener in your zone for shade? Um, maybe a perennial. I don't know. Um, so last year I bought a bunch of miscanthus grasses. Um, in, in general though, the grasses, they want, they, they want full sun. Um, but so the perennials might be a little bit more forgiving. Um, you know, like they and then there's like lots of really cold, hardy ones, but yeah, so the miscanthus is, is a family of grasses that have like pretty grass flowers. Um, you know, and then, and then they're really cold, hardy. So that, that's probably what I do if I was dealing with shade. Uh, Pat saying she spends $58 on seed and only has a 10 by 20 patio. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, so then you can clearly relate to me, right? Like, I have this massive area, so I have to spend all my money on seeds. Uh, yeah. I, I always joke about seed shopping. This is like, this is my joke that I, that I tell everyone when they're like, I have a problem, I bought too many seeds. I'm like, there's no such thing as too many seeds, just not enough garden. Right. So the, the seeds, the seeds isn't, isn't the problem. It's not having too many seeds. You just, you need a bigger garden space. Right. Um, how much land are you planning on growing flowers on in 2023? Oh, 2023. That's, I don't know. Okay. So I can answer that by saying what our space is. So last year we had a half acre of growing space. Um, so like just over 20,000 square feet. Um, and our ability to develop for growing on the property is we can do about an acre. Um, at that point we, we run out of space. 
for where to grow. Because when I say that we grow on a half acre, that it that means you know the the actual growing space, like all the paths around it, um, you know everything else, like where our house is and our yard and things like that. That that isn't that isn't counted as that growing space because um, our farm is two and a half acres. So so yeah, so we max out at an acre. Um, the plan is that we hopefully will be doing some work to develop the uh, like the other half of the farm um you know like maybe working the land we like to use sunflowers as like a, a a cover crop to like break new land um it's it's a good one for getting like something big and chunky into the ground because sunflowers do these massive root balls and sunflowers also um they they make it so it's harder for weeds to grow so that they they compete really well um with the weeds and then they grow so fast and so aggressive i'll be there in a in just a little bit um so he's upstairs isn't he um yeah so the so there's a good chance that we'll use some sunflowers um and we you know if we have left if we have extra of the sunflower selections we we plant those um but if not you know we can just use like bird seed sunflowers just to have something growing um so that would be ideal but we also need to be able to irrigate it so we're a little bit limited um the goal this year isn't for 2022 isn't to really grow more. Um, the goal is to refine how we are growing so that we grow easier. Um, so, you know, we have, we have a bunch of work to do for getting automated irrigation so that we don't have to like, you know, worry about like moving irrigation around and, you know, just things in general that are going to make our life easier. Okay, someone's, are you gonna grow poppy pods or jewels of apar for filler? Um, so I think I bought, I think I bought jewels of apar. Yeah. I think it was in, I think it's like in my Johnny's thing. Um, okay, guys, don't do that, okay? Yeah, no, don't do that. Um, and so if, if I have that, it's just that it was like by the Latin name when I was cl quickly flipping through. Um, yeah, because I think I'm gonna, no, no, don't, okay, don't do that, please. Yeah, and then for poppy pods, I do. I really do want poppy pods. Um, I put in a perennial order um, for. I put in a perennial order for uh, poppies, right? It's poppies that are going to be perennial um, here, and I'm not going to grow them for the flower. I'm going to grow them to be able to harvest the poppy bud. Um, but we picked ones that we like the look of, so we can enjoy the beautiful poppies. Um, and then get that harvest for, for the seed pod. Okay, that's a little bit of an annoying noise. Okay, so if you want to make that, you should go in the other room. Um, are you going to rotate any beds to follow cover crop? Okay, so yeah, that's another that's another big experiment that we're doing this year. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do more work with cover cropping. What we have been doing in the past is we don't don't <laughs> don't make silly faces. I can't get like out. It's that silly sad face I know how to make. I know it is. That's what I'm saying. Make people think I'm pinching you behind the camera or something. <laughs> just stuck in this comfy couch. Um, yeah, okay, so cover crops. I'm, yeah, so I'm going to do experiment with cover crops. Um, because, yeah, so in the past, we've been trying to maximize our space. Um, we've been trying to grow as much as possible. Um, and so because of that, we grow multiple multiple rounds of food in the same bed. Um, but going forward, we don't necessarily have to do that because we're going to grow less for next year. Um, so we, I'll be able to you know, plant flowers, and then when they finish, I can put in a cover crop. Um, no, 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 no. You're, you're making a mess of my teeth. Here, just if you want to stay, just sit. Um, yeah, so so I am going to be doing some experimenting with cover crops. Um, it, it the cover crops are a little bit tricky, right? Because you need you need amount of time for them to go. Um, so um, you know, and then we literally we don't have enough space. We don't have enough space to ever you know have you know a quarter of the farm fallow every year, and that that's part of the reason why we use so much in compost. Um, land around here is like crazy expensive. I'm better off paying, you know, the expensive cost to compost like crazy on my entire farm. 
than to, to allow things to go fallow. Exactly. Um, but, but it, you know, if any cover crops I can get in is, is going to make things better. And so that's, I'm interested in, in working with them this year. I, I have the like comments stopped and then I'm just scrolling up. Do you remove sunflower root balls when they're done? Okay. So if I need to plant in the bed, I do because they're massive. They're like this big, they're huge. Um, and they're like rocks. They're like, they never break down. But what I did this last year, um, cause you know, I kind of use the sunflowers, like I was saying to like, to break new ground, um, you know, and kind of as a cover crop. So when the pro cuts finish, I let, like I cut them off. Um, you know, when we went through, we cut them a little bit lower because some of them were pretty high and I was worried about them. Like, you know, they're like a stake, right? They're like, you could stab yourself and hurt yourself. So I made it a little bit more of, of, uh, you know, health and safety, get rid of the hazards. Um, and then I, I did cover crop. Um, I used buckwheat and so crimson clover, um, dyes, winter oh, dyes here. So when the, when the sunflowers finished, um, I did buckwheat and crimson clover knowing that when the winter came, it would, it would kill off. It's fine. You can do that. It would kill <laughs> off the cover crop, um, the sunflower root balls in the ground, you know, having roots in the ground and breaking down and composting. When I go, um, you know, in March to clean out the beds, I'll be able to pull it up instead of it being this massive root ball. It'll be a more reasonable thing to pull out and it'll be easier. Um, oh, cress. Someone's asking, do I have cress? And you know what? I didn't see it, but I feel like I should feel like I bought it, but me, I don't know. Maybe it was sold out. I bought all these seeds in November and some stuff was sold out. Some things, some things weren't available. Um, so because Crest is one of those things that I do want to grow this year. Yeah. Um, because yeah, because the, the Crest, you know, it's, it's great as a filler and it's also great as, as like a dried, you know, to be something that's like big and bulky, you know, like the, the Crest and like the sweet Annie, um, the grasses, they're all things that, you know, could be really valuable for me, um, to be like a bulky filler in, in like a, in a dried flower wreath. So yeah. it's, it's something I'm interested in. I know I have some. Yeah. Come on. I'm scrolling up. Okay. Buckwheat. Yeah. Buckwheat is, buckwheat is a good, like, put it in the summer um, or put it in the fall because it grows really fast and then the winter will kill it, um, you know, so that the bed is just like ready. It's the buckwheat is a good one to have something that just something down. Um, it, it kind of is, is like a cover crop that you can use when you can't use a lot of the other ones because things are so, things are so short. What color did you go for this year, guys? Um, Bay Aquarius. What colors did you go for this year? I don't know. Um, I made, like, I made a, I made, like, a, the live video a couple weeks ago was all about where I was, like, talking about, like, color trends. Um, so that, that might answer it, but, but I don't know exactly. I'm, like, making, the camera's going, like, out of focus because I'm, like, touching, I'm touching the screen to scroll up. Um, oh yeah, I got through all the, oh yeah, yeah, so Bay of course, what, what were you asking about there, about, um, about, like, colors, because I mean, I'm through all the comments, I'm up, I'm up to speed now, um, because I, I can probably answer that, but then, then I should get going, um, I, I saw some people talking about the, about Lysianthus, too, um, and I have, I have a bunch, so I, I will do no Lysianthus seed unboxings, um, cause I didn't, I didn't buy any, any Lysianthus seeds because last year I spent a hundred dollars on Lysianthus seeds cause they're expensive. And then I got zero blooms. They like were so hard to grow. They were like eh, this big, like started them in January. They're like, eh, for like four months. And then I was like, I don't know. Are you ever going to grow? Fine. I'll put you in the ground. And then they didn't do anything. At one point I found one and when I was weeding that it had a bud but I'd ripped the bud off. So that was the, that was the closest, <laughs> that was the closest that I got to a single one. So what I did, what this year, this is my last Lysianthus experiment. So I spent a hundred dollars in seed last year, zero. 
So this year I spent a thousand dollars on Lysianthus plugs. I bought a lot of, of plugs. Um, I have enough plugs to do two full beds. So I'm going to do a bed in a greenhouse and a bed out of the greenhouse. Um, and if I yet again get zero flowers, never again. <laughs> um, but I should hope if I spent a thousand dollars on Lysianthus plugs I, that I should, you know, at very least, hopefully I can sell a thousand dollars in Lysianthus. Um, you know, that that is the goal to, to you know, I, I spent a lot of money on seeds. You know, so this this Johnny Seeds order that I'm unboxing is um, I spent I spent three thousand dollars on it Canadian, um, which is a lot of money to spend on seeds, especially because the, these aren't the only seeds that I have. Um, but it's it's like it's enough seeds to grow. Like I probably have enough seeds in this in in like this order to if I was able to like, actually sell everything and plant everything because it's more than it's more than a year's worth of, of of flowers um so so you know there's probably like if i was to grow out my seeds and sell it um there it'd be like two hundred thousand dollars worth of flowers um so just just for context right like to so i sure i spent i spent three thousand dollars on seeds but you know if if you know things were done correctly that would only really account for like a one and a half percent um cost on on the final final product um you know and and i spend a lot because i have been buying like perennials um you know probably one of the most expensive things that we do are like stuff like tulips the tulips are really expensive and then they don't necessarily you know the a tulip bulb isn't isn't one and a half percent of the cost of a tulip flower. Um, because like when you grow them as a farm, it's just, it's a one, it's a one and done. Um, so, you know, th those have a big expense and we spend a couple thousand on those. Um, but I've also been like buying perennials. And so those are, you know, one time expenses. And eventually, you know, the plants actually will get big enough that I'll be able to divide them, you know, and then even potentially would be able to sell off perennials I'd be able to sell perennials and like make money on my perennials uh, beyond just the cut flowers um so you know I, I know I talk I know I talk about spending a lot of money on seed um you know but it's it, I buy a lot of seed for it um okay so I'm gonna get going there was one last question that I saw there um someone was asking how much sun carrots need and I I, I would give them full sun I don't I don't think most vegetables um and especially root crop vegetables or like fruiting vegetables um so like a tomato you know makes a fruit um you really need full sun to be able to successfully grow them um if all all you have is like part shade you're better off to stick to things that you grow for like the leafy greens um so if you wanted to have carrot greens sure you can grow your carrots in like part shade but you know you're you're better off to you know stick to like the lettuce and and the kale and and things like that because it, it'll be successful and it'll be happy in the part shade um instead of growing like sad carrots you know it might it might as well like make things easy for yourself <laughs> not hard by working with what you have um okay so i gotta go but thanks so much you know and it always it's it feels like crazy that so many of you guys like want to come and hang out and, and chat seeds, um, you know, and, and, you know, how generous so many of you guys are, um, you know, it, it's, it's very kind. Um, if, if you haven't seen it, you should go check out the sunflower selections video. Um, you know, it's fun to kind of go through and, and make that. Oh yeah. And that was the other thing I was going to bring up. Um, we also need to, to have a members live video, um, for January. Um, so I'm, I'm going to make a post about that so that we can kind of plan it for next week. Um, so, cause I saw a bunch of the members in the chat there, so I haven't forgotten. Um, it's just, it, it's been on my to-do list to make the post. So keep your eye peeled for the post, the way that, so the member, like the membership group, um, we do a private chat. And so the only way you can access that is through a, a post. Um, through a community post where I share the link. Um, so, so you need the link to be able to do it. 
um, you know, and those go up on, on the member, on, on the community posts. So um, yeah, look for that like tomorrow. I'll, I'll probably work on that tonight. Um, yeah, and then, then we can chat too. But I'm going to be back uh, with everyone um, next Monday. And then I'm going to be doing, you know, another chunk of the seeds, you know, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll talk about like the, I don't know. I, I have a lot of stuff still. There's like, there's so many things. It's intimidating for me to like do these live videos because there's so many things. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that I don't really know very much about stuff that I've never, that I've never grown before. Um, so yeah, so there's lots more fun things. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll chat about that next week. Thanks so much for hanging out guys. Okay, we'll see you next time.